All right, on to the third game on the Sweet 16 board here. We don't have to spend a ton of time, but I do want to hit on a tease that I mentioned earlier. Creighton yeah. around a nine and a half point favorite against Princeton, total around 140. Uh, yeah, I, with Ryan Kalkbrenner having a huge advantage, literally in terms of huge. size and length, and and figuratively against Woma for Princeton. I because I mean he's the focal point of Princeton's offense. They run a lot of action in the through the low post through Woma. So if Princeton's ball screen defense is a big issue against a Creighton team that runs a lot of pick and roll, especially with Kalkbrenner and ball screens to get those three point shots, McDermott is one of the best offensive minds of the country when it turns yeah, to yeah. when it comes to getting good three point looks. Then I would expect. Creighton to blow him out. Now, I'm not saying to lay it because it's a pretty big spread. It is. But it is. I, and I also hate the term public dog, but you got to think after beating Arizona on a, a lot of variants, and variants mm-hmm. is a part of the tournament for sure, like we hit on with Arkansas Gonzaga. You mentioned Gonzaga fans beating your guys' mentions last year. And, oh. and not only that, but, I mean, shooting lights out against Mizzou too. And that's a high variance Mizzou team considering how many threes they take. And you would, you would think Shireman bounces back to four or 15 from three in his last couple of games, an elite shooter that's struggled on a couple neutral courts. Now he gets a different one. So I, I again, th- the one point that I do want to make, if Creighton goes up against Alabama in the elite eight, yeah, because I don't think we're going to have a, po- going to have a podcast for the weekend. I'll just probably just do write-ups. That's the matchup. Mm-hmm. where I think Alabama's in trouble if Creighton's three-point shooting falls because they can absolutely take advantage of Alabama and drop. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. Uh, Baylor is, well, not Baylor. Baylor Shireman, not Baylor <laughs> the team, I guess. Look at me. But uh, Creighton is clicking at the right time. Princeton, I mean, you know, you go look at some of their stats here. This offense is intelligently run. And I know it's Princeton. I know it's an easy comp to make there, but it really, I mean, fourth highest rim and three rate in the country, seventh best shot selection, uh, 31st highest open three rate, 32nd highest rim and three points per possession expectation. Uh, the problem is Creighton's really good at defending all of that too. I mean, second lowest rim and three rate allowed for the Jays, uh, seventh worst shot selection allowed. So like really don't let their opponents get good looks. This is exactly the type of defense that I think Princeton's really going to struggle with because they were able to get good looks and, and manufacture good shots and hit them against these other defenses. But Creighton's kind of built around stopping exactly what Princeton's trying to do, in my opinion. Uh, the shot quality model is really hooking into that, projecting this one at 13. Just enough for me to say, if you made me take a pick, I would ta- I would lay the points with Creighton. I think they are just in a good spot. If you can handle Baylor and those guards, I just don't really know what Princeton's going to bring to the table that we didn't see in their last game. So I think they're ready. They're prepared for a similar style of smart guard heavy attack. They have the size to overpower the front court of Princeton. And honestly, it just feels like the Princeton runs probably up. Missouri and Arizona both have been called fraudulent this season. Arizona playing with their food too much. I already talked about that. And then, you know, Missouri, who just kind of got in the face of Utah State, limited their threes to get to that game, just were sort of outsmarted. So I don't really see Creighton getting outsmarted. I know we don't want to spend too much time on this one but yeah give me uh let me lay the points I I think the Blue Jays are in the form everyone wanted to see at the beginning of the year and quickly here I I know it's number dependent but Mm -hmm. would you bet if it's a good enough number per year ratings and and per your model would you bet Creighton against Alabama um yeah I can actually the cool thing about our model is I can create any matchup even before they happen so give me like two seconds here uh it looks like our number on Creighton Alabama is going to be right at about four 5.3 in favor of Alabama so if I can get like a seven or an eight I'm probably looking at Creighton um, there's no way it's there's seven. no way though no yeah, yeah so I probably would be on Alabama honestly if this thing comes really in, yeah if this thing because this thing could come in at three Right. I honestly think that's where it might end up being three and a half or four. Okay. Um, I just, I don't know. Obviously, it depends how Alabama looks. I'm not going to sit here and say, Brandon Miller, they come out yeah. and have a terrible game against San Diego State and just, you know, squeak by. I think there's always, you know, a lot of strategy here. Like McDermott's obviously going to be watching to see what actually works in this scenario against them and try to sort of uh, cut out what they clearly maybe are preparing to do for this weekend's games. Um, you know, obviously, these teams are prepared 
preparing for both of their contingent uh, potential uh, opponents for the weekend if they make it. So I think we're going to see some interesting strategy out of McDermott. But uh, if if Alabama is able to really get by uh, San Diego State, I think I'm on them, especially if the number's short. But I wouldn't be shocked to see this thing right around four or five and perfectly agree with shot quality. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, you to your point about Creighton, you know, you didn't say it, but you kind of alluded to it in terms of inconsistent shot making at times going back to the sweet 16 shot quality rankings Creighton's defense like you said against Princeton matches up well they have the fourth rated adjusted shot quality defensive rating but 10th in offense and that's again McDermott's great at designing those sets to get good looks but they're not always hitting shots and Shireman has been a good example of that they're not always ultra consistent 